Okay, I wanted to show you guys real quick uh, one, of, one of what I think is one of the neatest little features in the new New York release for ServiceNow, and that's dynamic translation. All right, so first step uh, for dynamic translation is you need to have uh, your user account set up to have a language. So out of the box this is no, but uh, you can add additional language support and, and whatnot for your system. Uh, but set those, set the language up for your users so that their default language is something like English. Okay, so I've already done that for uh, my system admin here on my my dev instance. Um, <clears throat> be this in the default view, and uh, I'm set up for English. Okay, that's step one. So st step two is to enable the plugin. Um, you have to contact your sales rep as far as licensing is concerned for this because I'm not really sure of that but but you can turn on uh, your dynamic translation and install the plugin here once the plugins on you're gonna need uh, one of two things either an IBM Watson account or a uh, Microsoft Azure it only works with those two services as they offer a translation service. Uh, so I just went up and over and set myself up a free uh, IBM Cloud Watson account uh, to use for this demo, but you can set up a free one as well. It allows you something like 1 million characters a month translated, which is way more than I need, but uh, that's just on the free account. Uh, but once you get that, you're going to need uh, this API key uh, and this URL. All right, let's go back here. So once that is done, we need to come here to Dynamic Translation and uh, turn on the configuration for the one you want. Um, this is for Microsoft. I turned on for... Uh, IBM here. Uh, you just need to put active and default there uh, and you're ready to go. All right, once you've done that you need to set up uh, credentials. So these credentials are using ba basic auth. So when you go to set this up, let me show you here, and click new, right? You're gonna get prompted for what kind you want, and you just want basic auth, right? And with basic auth, the key here <laughs> is the username for IBM Watson is API key, exactly like that API key. The password, you come here. And you've got this key and this button here to copy to clipboard. So you copy it and you paste it in the password. Uh, set it to active, save it, and there you go, your credential is set up. Next, you need to set up the connection. All right. So here, we've gone to the connection and we've set up and the IBM translation, right? And we have a new one for IBM, right? You give it whatever name you want, supply it the credential that you created in the last step, right? And then don't do anything with either of these boxes, but you, then you put the connection URL that comes back from here, so this URL, and you put that in that field, and leave everything else the same, 
make sure it's active and then you're ready to go. All right? And then that's what it looks like when it's ready to go. All right? To show you that. And this one's set up for me. So I've got my credential. I've got uh, my connection alias comes there and then the connection URL. Okay. Great. Once you've got all of that set up, you need to then add this dynamic translation to a field. All right? So I've gone ahead over here in incident. All right? And if you come here and you configure dictionary, you come down here to attributes and you want to add the dynamic translation enabled value true. And you just do that by clicking new. And the attribute is dynamic translation enabled and true. Submit. Now that the field has that attribute, if we go back and we look at it, we now have this cool little button. So it can be added to pretty much any string field uh, that you have. I just added it here to description. So it's up to you what, what fields you might want to add it to. Uh, but now when you have, let's say in this case, Spanish, because I think a free IBM Watson account only translates Spanish to English or vice versa. Um, but here is my description in Spanish. I click the translate button and boom another little box pops up with the translation. So it's it's really handy for any sort of customer who has uh, tickets being passed around in different languages uh, or customers who speak a different language and you you might need to to be able to translate the description like, let's say it came in via email and you get this nice little box pop up with the translation and it says translated using IBM because we used IBM it could be Azure as well so that's it it's really easy to set up very cool little feature I'm a big fan of it it's also has some API level calls so you can script it which is really cool uh, and use it in workflow as well. So lots of power there. Definitely something you should take a look at if you deal in a multi-language uh, environment.